Hello, this is Father Louis Skurdy, Friends of the Word. We're here in Galway. We're at Nuns Island. We just attended Holy Mass at the cathedral, which is very beautiful. We'll get back to that later. We'll see some other insight pictures of the cathedral. And here we're at the Poor Clares Convent on Nuns Island. The chapel is in the back and you see the cathedral in the distance. We're here visiting the Sisters of the Poor Clare as well as the cathedral and the beautiful sights of Galway, Ireland. The weather today is cool. It already rained, it rains at night. Wake up in the morning to a wet mist. And then by noon, the sun starts coming out and here we are enjoying the beautiful weather and scenery and architecture of the Galway Cathedral in Galway, Ireland. We'll be back with more selections from our visit to Ireland and the poor Clares. This has been Father Louis Skirty with Friends of the Word. This is Father Lou. We're in the chapel of the poor Clares here on Nuns Island. There is a retreat going on, so people are at lunch after their retreat mass this morning. But this chapel is so beautiful. It's peaceful, calm, and shows all of the history of the Franciscans, including images of St. Francis of Assisi and, of course, St. Clair. The cathedral is 60 years old, and you can see the cathedral when you leave this beautiful chapel. The altar is beautiful as stone, as well as the cathedral. Beautiful stone from the local area. This has been Father Louis Scurdy at the Poor Clare's Convent in Galway, Ireland. Hello, this is Father Louis Skurdy with Friends of the Word, and this is where I am, in Galway, Galway, Ireland. And I am honored to be here today at the Galway Convent Monastery of the Poor Sisters. The, the Poor Clares. The Poor Clares, they're not Poor Sisters, they're wonderful enriched beautiful sisters here at the Monastery of the Poor Clares in Galway. And my guest today is the head novice mistress. The novice mistress, yeah. And sis Sister Colette. Sister Colette. Nice to meet you, nice sister. Nice to meet you, Father. Uh, actually, uh, we just had breakfast here in this room, and there's a little bit of an echo because it's one of the visiting rooms in which guests come to greet the sisters or their relatives. And my focus today is going to be in introducing you to the poor Clares here at Galway. So most of the questions are really directed for information's sake, because today, 21st century, what is a poor Clare founded by St. Francis' associate, St. Clare? And um, Sister's going to give us a full description of what life is like and what the calling vocation is like to be called from the world into this beautiful, beautiful area of contemplation. So, Sister, thank you for, <laughs> first of all, thank you very much for allowing us to come in. You're very welcome. Mass was beautiful this morning. Thank God, and, yeah. and Now, Father is the uh, celebrant each day, the Franciscan Yes, priest. he celebrates, uh, well, the Franciscans celebrate for us all the time. There are chaplains, Great, and yeah, it's wonderful because they're very close to us here, and our confessors, and uh, so we're very close to the Franciscans. The location of this uh, convent is on... An island. An island. In and the city it called? centre. Nuns Island. Nuns very island. appropriately. <laughs> it's, 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 it's in the shadow of the cathedral. The cathedral yeah. you can see as soon as you, you enter, um, the, you exit the door. It's, it's really the heart of the city. It is. It's very yeah. close to the city centre and the central street in the city. But it's like a nucleus. As you say, we're under the shadow of the cathedral. St. Nicholas's Church also, the right. Church of Ireland Church. The university is over here, the hospital is here, the presentation school is there, the fish school is there, the city centre is there, so we're, it's really a hub. Right, right. Yeah. It's, when was this convent founded? Uh, we came to Galway in 1642, yes. Wow. <laughs> and uh, this actual building was uh, 1825. 
But we came to, to Galway 1642, the, there was persecution of the church in Ireland at that time. So they had been, the sisters had been in Athlone, which is the centre of the country. Yes. And they had to flee there, they were chased away. And um, so they came to Galway. Some of the sisters were actually from Galway mm -hmm. and they were given refuge. So um, 1649, so seven years later, they were given the gift of this island, Nuns Island, as a gift in perpetuity from the city. Wow. It's amazing, isn't it? Was it called, it wasn't called Nuns Island? I, then, I'd, say, I'd say it was <clears> called <throat> after the nuns, when the nuns right, took right, right. possession of it. it. It's also called Ilan Altanuk uh, in oh. Irish, which has, there, there's disputing, uh, people not sure what that means, but it might be something to do with swans. Oh, okay. Alla is swan in Ireland. So that was, it's still called that in, Ir in Irish, Ilan Altanuk. But it is actually uh, an island. It, it is, beautiful centre. because we crossed over the bridge yeah. to get here. So 1649, they were given the gift of the island. And then 1659, 10 years later, they had to, the, the persecution came as far as Galway. Mm -hmm. And uh, so they had to either uh, renounce being sisters or leave the country. And they were proclaimed then Yes, they or were go proclares. into hiding. Okay. So some of the sisters stayed in the city centre. Um, in Market Street in hiding and they wore secular clothes but continued it was the only way they could continue yes, their way of life sure. and the others flee, fled to Spain they had to take refuge in Spain okay. and then they, they got back um, you know some of them got back some of them didn't some died on the way some died in Spain mm. we have lovely accounts of the Irish sisters that died in Spain in the different monasteries that they took refuge in and um, then I think it's a miracle we even got the island back. Yes. 1825. It was before, just before Catholic emancipation, and this building um, dates to 1825. And That's we're here wonderful. since. What is? Not all of us are here since. No, no, no. I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> there were there were two things I promised sister I would not ask how old she is and how old she's a sister. So I'm not going to touch those areas. So. I can't even remember. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very 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 short time now. Okay. Um, Tell me, what is the uh, attraction that you had to this life? Mm -hmm. And then we'll talk about young women today. But okay. what, what attracted well, it, it was it was prayer, I suppose. Uh, I had a deep experience of God's love for me personally, and that just changed my life. It was not always on my horizon to be mm -hmm. none, I can tell you that. And you were living here in Galway? Yes, yeah, and I went to the university here, and I loved my life. I had a good social life boyfriends, friends, um, you know, and uh, I, I felt very content, but still there was some unfulfillment there. Mm. And uh, then, as I said, I had a very deep experience of God's love. It was very brief during mass, but I just knew that that was Jesus at the consecration. Excellent. It was amazing. And that has never left me. And uh, it just with that conviction, came the conviction of the power of prayer. Mm. I want to hold that okay. thought just for a second. I think our audience, all of us have to realize that God speaks to us. Sister just described a very personal experience during the, during the consecration. You've had that too. All of us have it subtly, sometimes profoundly. It doesn't come every day. It's not a regular basis. But God speaks to you and he speaks to each of us to carry on our vocation, whatever the vocation is, single, married, religious, it doesn't matter. And calls us to a greater fulfillment in his, in his kingdom. Be aware of that, be aware of it. I, I can't say when it's coming and to whom it's coming, but be aware that God is speaking to you and he does speak to you on a regular basis, but sometimes in these profound seconds. But let's get back to Sister. Okay. <laughs> so, um, as I say, it was a conviction of the power of prayer. And also um, a sorrow, I suppose, in my heart that so many people, you know, or that, you know, faith is declining and, and mm. just people not aware of the centrality of Jesus and the love of Jesus. And with that, just the a line, I remember reading a line that St. Francis had said, that he went through the woods one night crying that love is not loved, love with a capital L. Well, that really touched my heart. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I felt that I was open at that stage to whatever the Lord wanted me to do, even if it was to be coming on. Still wasn't, you know, not sure. That's <laughs> up, on top of the priorities. <laughs> right. But I was open. And uh, that was, the, I suppose, the line that really 
drew me to this way of life. Excellent. The sense our, our life is we have adoration of blessed sacrament every day. So we're focused on adoring the Lord. Excellent. And I felt to be a loving presence for the Lord. Um, I know, you know, that, that, that uh, it, it's just a powerful presence, even in our own families. You know, if you have a sick family member, uh, you're so grateful for the medical staff that yes. do all the looking after. But if you have somebody there that you know loves you, loves you yes. you're not trying to put on a performance. <laughs> mm -hmm. They're there. They'll keep away the people that you're not able for. So it's just a loving presence. That's and great. yet I found that when I came in, I suppose I thought I was doing this big thing for God, giving him my whole life. <laughs> and yet I've been the one that has been you, the recipient. You received you know. it, sure. Okay, this, the, the poor Clares were here and you lived in the area, so you knew of them. Why the poor Clares and not another religious order? Uh, I suppose I just was uh, attracted to the Franciscan charism. And, okay. um, uh, you know, I was involved in the Franciscan church in the... Uh, the folk group that they had and um, I used to go to a prayer group, a young, young people's prayer group, there could be a hundred people there at night and the, the, the priest that was coming to it was a Franciscan, Franciscan yeah. so he had a big influence on my life, yeah, yeah. I was very inspired by him and I suppose at the start the only order I knew of that was dedicated to prayer was the Poor Clares, so it, I always knew it was prayer. Okay. And I always felt it was the poor clears. The question was where. <laughs> That's right. But they were in your backyard. Yeah, yeah, I know. And I didn't think this is where I was going to come and go away, but I just felt at home in this monastery That's when I came great. in the door. Um, what was the process that one followed then to become a poor client? Um, well, I suppose I was discerning with my spiritual director, and if somebody feels that they have a call, it's very important. Spiritual direction is very important. Yes. And then I used to come and visit, meet Mother Abbess, and she was lovely. And then the fears I had, I suppose, or the different inhibitions started to subside. And I just knew the Lord was calling me. So then it was a matter of deciding to actually just do it, because you can keep putting it off. Right, right, right. <laughs> and uh, so I entered on the 31st of May. The Feast of the Visitation. My mother mm -hmm. hoped that would be what it was, that it would be a visitation. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> because they found it very difficult. My family found it very that, difficult. That's mm. true. That is quite a challenge on yeah. families. Yeah, it is because it's the individual themselves that has the vocation, that has the calling. Yes. And this grace goes with that. Um, yesterday, but, not yes, to interrupt you, yes. but yesterday, we're, we're coming in to see Anne. Um, it was, it's a Sunday, mm -hmm. and other families are coming, and some of them had food, mm -hmm. baskets of food and a beautiful cake. So is that how they visit their family members here? Uh, yes, but uh, yesterday there was a, an event on here, so people were bringing oh, okay, uh, food extra, for that. Yeah. Um, but yes, uh, like we live on divine providence. I suppose the fact that we're in Galway for so long, there's a long tradition of bringing alms, bringing food oh, to the, uh, anything that we need. We don't go out shopping. And uh, so people just bring us what we need, or if they come to the door looking for prayers, they may, may ask us if there's anything we need. And uh, so we're very, uh, pe the people of the city, there's a, a mutual relationship really. And this has been going on mm. for hundreds of yeah. years. It's, it's just amazing, you know, to see how the Lord works. Little ways even, you know, you just be amazed. That's yeah. beautiful. Okay, we're going to interview Sister a few minutes, then we're going to come back and get into the, the, um, the life of the, the sisters, but not yet. Um, go back to the families. Most families' reactions to their daughters coming into the monastery. Well, it can vary. I mean, some um, don't find it so difficult. Some are proud of their daughter. But increasingly, I think, when it comes to a religious vocation of any type, um, the families are um, find it very difficult. Mm. Um, maybe smaller families in that it's it's more difficult. But I think when when they see that you're fulfilled, that you're content and happy, um, when my family used to come to visit, my dad would always he went through a, a phase of this anyway. He'd say, "Are you happy?" <laughs> I used to hate it <laughs> because um, you know you have good days and bad days, sure, and, just uh, life. Yeah. but still you're content. You know it's yes, the right place, yes. and uh, so then I remember reading an article, and the the title of it was "Happiness versus uh, Meaning." Oh, beautiful. and I said that's it. 
I read that and I was like photocopied it and I gave it, I gave it to read it, yeah, to read it. it. Uh, no, just to him because it was a joke like you know it became a joke between us are you happy um, because uh, happiness is something that comes and goes mm. joy is much deeper Indeed, yes. and you can joy can coexist with sorrow and, and um, other things and uh, so the, the deeper question is has your life meaning mm. and that for me that was the answer for my dad. <laughs> that's great. And that's, our, that's going to be our pause. I'm interviewing Sister uh, Colette. She's novice mistress here at the Monastery of the Poor Clares in Galway. And we're going to have all of the information regarding the monastery on our site and, and with subsequent uh, contact information uh, as well as their website, etc. Because I want you to know, and I want you to pass this on to your friends and anyone interested, male or female, but of course, it, this spe special edition of uh, Friends of the Word is directed toward women in the 21st century. This has been Father Louis Skirty with Sister Colette here at the Poor Class and Mon Monastery in Galway, Ireland. And we'll be back. God bless you. And keep the word alive in your Thank mm -hmm. you.